Hello everyone, welcome to another video where I compare cycles to Octane. In this video, I'm trying to see in an animation that I created previously, what would look better and what exactly is the pros and cons between cycles and Octane. Now before we get started, I want to say that Octane and cycles, they're both great render engines and you can't really go wrong with either, but you might see that some of the pros in Octane will be very attractive to some users. So let's go over it. On the first frame, which is a still render, we can see a lot of detail that is missing actually in the cycles render. For one reason or another, it seems to be blurred out or seems blurrier. And that might be because it's not handling textures on the angle as well as Octane. And if you look at Octane, you can actually see more of the ground textures, especially these white specks that's riddled within the asphalt texture. And that comes through in Octane, but not in Cycles. Let's hit play. Oh, I'm going to pause it again. And so another thing we need to take a look at is the emission textures on this building in the background. They're both using the same textures, but these smaller windows that are fainter should almost be non-existent. And you can see this in the actual texture. But when we look at Octane, it's actually displayed properly see that these small little windows here have faint lights coming through it. So let's move on to the next. Here you can see, I'm going to put a pause here, that the ground textures, again, is also adding to the streaks. So we can see a little bit more detail in the streaks on the ground here, mainly because Octane does a better job with the textures. And if we look at the lights, these lights are using the same settings, but you can tell that in Octane, it's a little bit less blown out. In Cycles, it's more blown out. So the Cycles render is not using Filmic, it's using Standard, and the Octane is using RAW, which is pretty much puts it in the same sRGB category. One thing I do want to point out is that the color here it's different, and that's because I misadjusted the light color between the two. They should be the same, that's user error, that's not the render engine's fault. So it's better to just take a look at the characteristics than the color. One thing I do want to note, let's rewind that a little bit. If you notice carefully, there's ever so slight jitter going on with the Octane render. But in the Cycles render, it's pretty smooth. This is where I think Cycles is a little bit better with motion blur. You just kind of have to set it and forget it. You don't really need to tinker with steps or just activating it for each object. Where in Octane, you kind of have more control over it, but it requires a little bit more work. So in this render here, it looks like the light that's reflecting off the ground is flickering a little bit more than the Octane render. And that's because I'm going to say that Octane handles samples more evenly distributed out, whereas Cycles in a very dark scene will actually make it a little bit splotchy. And I'm using the same Intel denoisers for both of them. So if you take that out of the equation, it's really about how the samples are handled and it's just smoother with Octane. Now if we look at the backlight, you can see that it doesn't really get that red. I think you can make it more red, but if you enter the same settings for the color of the, uh, the back emission, which is using a texture emission by the way, the color of the octane render becomes like a brighter, it starts to become whiter the brighter the emission is. But the cycles render, it stays pretty red. So I like to say that in that sense, the Octane render is a little bit more realistic looking because of that. Because that's generally what happens when you increase the emission intensity. Things start become white and not stay like a very saturated red. Also, when you look at the fall off of the lights that's coming off the, the siren lights, you can see that the fall off is a lot smoother and better looking. 
than the cycles render. Okay, another thing I wanted to point out is how Octane handles alpha. So I'm gonna go to go forward and actually show another frame here. So okay, so in this frame you can tell that the alpha channel, when you plug it into cycles, automatically shows through. It's I think it's just kind of pre-multiplied and applied. And in Octane, it doesn't do that you actually have to reuse an alpha texture node and plug it into the opacity channel to have the texture display property. So in this case, I forgot to do that, so it's not showing the same thing. But keep in mind, it requires a little bit more work in Octane to set up the alpha. And you look at the rest of the video, it's similar in a lot of different ways. So both programs, I would say 90% of the time works really well. And okay, actually, let's rewind back on this section here. So this is another demonstration of why I believe Octane does a better job. As you can see, there's a lot more texture detail coming through on the render. But yeah, so about 90% of the render is pretty close to each other, but there is subtle differences. I would say Cycle is a little bit easier to use, mainly because it's so well integrated into Blender. While Octane, which is not a native render engine for Blender, is designed to be well integrated, it will still be a little bit more uh, tinkery. So there's a little bit more adjustments that you can make and that gives you a lot of control, but it requires a little bit more time. But you know, some people like that. Some people want to have more control so they can get the best and most optimized render. And that's about it for that movie sequence. Another thing I want to take note of is that when it comes to subsurface scattering, I think it's pretty clear that Octane does a better job. So let me throw up an image for you so you can take a look. So in this render here, on the left side, you have Cycles, and on the right side, you have Octane. At a quick glance, they look pretty similar, but if you look pretty closely into the details, you can see that Octane comes through a little bit better. Let's look at the hair highlights. It seems very blown out. In Octane, it comes out a little bit softer. If you look at the side, the highlights off the side that's coming off the side of the head, you can see the same results too. Now one thing about cycles that I find very strange is that it tends to brighten up the surfaces at a glancing angle. So right here around the nose is very apparent, around the bottom edge of the cheeks. But in Octane it doesn't do that, which I think is the proper look. It should look more like this. The next thing is around the eyes, the mascara and the eyeliner. Everything looks much more natural in Octane but in cycles, it doesn't. It's a little bit harsh and not as well blended in. And I am assuming that has to do with the texture and how the subsurface scattering is working with it. These eyeliner or this mascara has a subsurface property because they're kind of waxy or oily. So it should be subsurface, but here it just doesn't look quite right. And that's about it for my comparison. In the future, I would like to do more comparisons like this, but we'll see how it goes. I believe Octane is a little bit better, but then again, you're gonna have to pay for it. However, if you're working with clients, the clients are gonna want to have the best quality they can get for their money. And if I were to work with clients, I would probably provide them a solution such as Octane. Thank you, and I hope you guys learned something from this, and I will see you next time.